Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 16. If you found that, say word up. The Bible reads like this simply. Honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. It does not place a condition on whether or not they're together or not. You ain't going to like me this morning. (laughs) It says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving. We're going to talk about, let's get 10 things straight. You may have a seat. This is part six. This message, oh man, oh, so good to see so many here this morning. I ask that our, that our 180 youth ministry, that they're not, that they stay in service um, today. I don't want them dismissed today. I want them to catch this. I believe that many of the issues we're experiencing today is because we've, we've forgotten the fifth commandment. We don't honor that the, the basic principles that are embedded or imbibed, rather, in this fifth commandment. And so what I want to do is I want to take my time with this this morning because I want to make sure no one misses the biblical ethos that's embedded in the fifth commandment of honoring your father and your mother or your mother and your father. Someone once said that if you love something, set it free. It's that if it returns to you, it was meant for you. If it doesn't return to you, it was never yours. Well, for the context of for this morning's message, I'd like to say the same thing with a twist. If you love something, let it go. Um, if you let it go, but it remains with you, after you let it go, after you let it go, it lives in your house still. It messes up your stuff still. It eats your food still. It's still on your same cell phone plan. It still asks you for money. Um, it, it acts like it doesn't even know that you set it free. Even after at least 21 years of age, you still notice that it's asking you what you're cooking or what we eat tonight. If, if you've let it go, and it's 21 or north of, then that means that you might be dishonored as a parent. That may mean that you are dishonored as a parent. Um, just look straight ahead, but I... There are parents here right now, some streaming, some present, that your biggest fear is that if you die today, that your adult and grown kids couldn't survive. Yeah, you, you're like, you know, I, I just, I can't leave because if, if I die today, my grown kids, they, they, they could. Here's a quote. Here's a quote to consider. The world is passing through troubling times. The young people today think of nothing but themselves. They have no reverence for parents or old age. They don't even respect their elders. They talk as if they know everything. And, they, and, and what passes for wisdom with us is foolishness with them. As for the girls, they are immodest in speech, behavior, and dress. When you hear this statement, it sounds as if this could have been written yesterday. Yet this was written by Peter the Great in the 1700s. Another quote to consider. Today we are seeing a decay of good family life. Parental control is a thing of the past and children no longer obey their parents. This second quote comes from an inscription 
that was discovered in Egypt over 3,000 years ago. Hmm. You see, this thing of disobedience or family disruption or, or children or youth decay, this is no brand new thing. It's always been around. Therefore, God has always wanted to address it. Humanity has always had to deal had, had, had with it, and, and humanity has always had to deal with dishonoring of with the dishonoring of parents. And God was so concerned with it that He says, right after you understand how you to treat me in the first three commandments, right after you get some rest in the fourth commandment, the next thing I want you to do is set your mind and energy on honoring your parents. Before it gets to how to treat other people. Before it tells you don't kill, murder, steal, adult, before any of that, it says, I need you to first honor your parents. And the real says, he said, it makes no sense for you to be nice and respectable towards everybody else, but you dishonor the ones I used to get you here. When a teacher, we, 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 we have a school here, and, and, and every, whenever we have like teacher, parent, teacher night or something along those lines, if, if there's a student in our school that's very respectful and they're very courteous, they say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, they, they're, they're neat, they do the homework, do all these good things. Whenever we meet their parents, the first thing I say is, you're doing a great job. Because we tend to tie in the behavior that a child exudes outside the home to what they learn inside the home. Now, now we know that there are certain exceptions to the rule, but most times, most times, most times, a child emulates what we used to call good home training. Is this too old for you? Because home training says, if I train you right at home, then, then you'll know how to act when you get in them streets. St. Augustine said, if anyone fails to honor his parents, is there anyone he will spare? In other words, if a person would treat a parent with disdain and disrespect, ain't no telling what that person, if, if I watch you cuss your mama out, yeah. Why would I trust you to not get so upset you won't cut me in my sleep? If you ball your fist up to fight your dad, if your anger is so out of control, you then how would I, why would I why would I expect more of you? And I didn't bring you here. Would you pay to us the person? These things must be taught by us in order to be caught by them. Amen. So parents, so parents now, <coughs> I'm not letting us off the hook. Because the reason why our children are how they are, most times we did not teach them how, or they simply act according to what they see. See, angry, see, kids tend to be great impersonators. How your child loses his or her temper, how they just kind of lose it. Where do they get that from? Where do they, where do they see someone? I want to share with us this morning some things that should be imbibed, I-M-B-I-B-E-D, imbibed in the incubator to our kids to teach them how to be, be blessed in the place where the where Lord wants him to be. Where I, me thinks that many of us right now, the reason why we have not advanced or flourished is because of grudges we're holding towards a parent. This ain't just for the babies. This for some grown folks that the Lord has been, that, that you know, you've gotten, you've gotten accustomed to the anger towards a parent. You just learn how to deal with it. Who am I talking to? You learn how to function. This, but the Bible says, if you don't honor him and her, 
then what you're, what, in a real sense, what you're doing is you are shortening your time in, the, in your promised place. What the Bible says. The word honor, the word, the word honor is kaved, 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 kaved rather. It literally means, Vanessa, it literally means to add weight to, to make weighty. You see, when we call someone in a, in a, in a, in a slang sense a heavyweight, in their, in, their, in their particular field, like you are heavyweight in the financial industry, you are heavyweight in the rap game, you are heavyweight in this and that. We're saying that a heavyweight means that you are a big ball of chocolate. That means you are someone to be respected because you're a heavyweight. Some of y'all from old school, you know, for, for as far as like, I'm not going to fight certain people. I mean, you're a lightweight, cuz you're lightweight. They ain't fit. Hey, man, come deal with my lightweight. The lightweight infers that this is a person who doesn't have enough weight. They don't warrant. They don't warrant your time. Then you're lightweight. And so we don't get involved with light. And so God is saying to honor our parents, it literally means to make them heavy. To make their esteem, to make their person, their significance, their position in life, to make it heavy. Colossians 3.20 says to to the children, obey your parents. Now, it is not saying that the parent is always right. It says, obey and honor, honor your parents. Make them heavyweights in your life. Kids, don't dismiss their opinions so easily. When they say something, it should weigh on you a little longer. May I just say this one thing and just move I got. Let me just interject this one thing. Watch it. Listen to me. If you are a child under the age of 16 for sure, what do you think your parent wants from you? <laughs> What do you have to offer? <laughs> you ain't paying for nothing. I mean, you, I mean, what is it? What is it that you want? To, what are they trying to get from you? Come on now. May I just give you some, a humble reality? You have nothing. It's. I mean, I mean, just think about it. If you have nothing to offer them. But they're offering you all this energy, time, and sagacity, then, then maybe it's for you. Maybe, maybe they're just loving you on credit. Maybe they want nothing from you but to see you better. Yeah. Just, just, just maybe. I don't know. I'm just maybe. And so in honor of your parents, not only should we add weight to them, make them heavyweights, well, I said this, that we should also appreciate them. Show some gratitude. I'm I'm, I want to show you how to honor them so you can know. One, make them heavy. They should mean something. Two, appreciate them. Show some appreciation. Show some gratitude. As children, we sometimes don't recognize how much of a sacrifice parents made. Nine months of carrying you. Nine plus hours of labor and in, in, in delivery. Late nights, loss of sleep, dirty diapers, expensive denim jeans, patching up scrapes, emergency rooms, an inconvenient time to take off work when you don't have the time to take off work from the first day of kindergarten to the last day of college, the countless times you may have went without so they could have. I'm, from, the, from the myriad of events that you wanted to go to, but you can find out how to watch your bad kids. <laughs> and you, you really wanted to go. The mental and emotional fatigue that comes with just being responsible for another life. You don't understand the pressure when you're responsible that, that if they eat, it's on you. If they don't eat, it's on you. <laughs> this, this, from, 
from the long nights of consternation just trying to figure these fools out. I mean, uh, no, stop, no. Uh, from, from, from all of the love, the energy that went into you beating their behinds, the long hours in the gym, to be able, to be confident that if you need to physically choke the life from their body, that you're able, hey. To do just that is, being a parent is one of the, I'm being a parent it's one of the biggest sacrifices. Doing it right. It's, I ain't come to talk about that. It's one of the biggest sacrifices that one could ever make. Yet if you ask a parent, even the mother who had a hard time carrying the baby, who was assigned to weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of bed rest because they're... if you ask them, would you do it again? Yes. She said, no. <laughs> the daughter like, mama don't mean that, babe. Mama don't mean that. Mama don't mean that. Mama don't... I mean, the, the, the daughter about the car said, oh my God, mama. <laughs> mama didn't mean it, mama didn't mean it. But they do it again for you. It's, and, 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 it's, and, and it's a trip to me because when, when single people see how hard parenting is, they're, they're confused as to why <laughs> I gotta say this stuff. Is never mind. Okay, well, so single people without children, they're confused. Like, why are now, now so y'all getting a divorce and you in court fighting for full custody of these kids? So you want, <laughs> somebody said, you know what? <laughs> Therefore, one of the greatest demonstrations of honor is when a child shows appreciation and gives gratitude to a parent. When it comes to honoring our parents, it's more than simply honor them for when they do well. Now we're getting to some of us hindsight 2020 because sometimes when we're a child, we don't realize how bad of a job our parents are doing. Sometimes later on, we look back and say, you know what, I wasn't, that wasn't right. <laughs> Honoring a parent is not what you do when they did a great job. That, that, that's, that's not honoring. Honoring a parent and how God is saying a parent is to be honored, you honor the position, not the performance. It's because God has positioned them to get you here. Their position warrants honor and respect, not their performance. You gotta cast this down because you're withholding honor because of their performance. And God said, no, honor them because of their position. Well, that's hard to do. I can't do that because I don't, I don't, I, I don't respect what I saw. I don't respect this. Well, um, 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 when you went to court, you honor the judge who you didn't know prior to you got to court. You said, your honor, and you was real respectful. <laughs> yes, sir, no, sir. Why? 
because the judge had the power and authority to determine how you spent your next couple, uh, your, your next years or your next little money. Well, if you would give a judge that type of respect, who has the power to determine where you spend your next few years, your next, how much more respect should you give a God that can determine your eternity? I'm to my nobody under 17 clap yet. <laughs> Interesting. What does honor look like? We know respect, obey, and appreciate, but what, what else does honor look like? Um, um, during, let me walk you through some of the stages from child to adulthood. Let, 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 me just, let me just point out to some of the stages of life that kids oftentimes go through when it comes to their parents. The first stage, the first stage is when we're young, we tend to idolize our parents. Ain't nobody, your, your, your daddy stands 12 feet tall. Your mom is a superhero. No say about my mom either. It used to be the time we talking about somebody, the mama was, it was, was, was immediate grounds, what was immediate license to fight. As a matter of fact, you know when somebody really wanted to fight you or not, because if they really want to fight you, they'll talk about your mama. And we'll tell them, say all you want, say don't say about my mama. And your mama's so thug, when you go home and tell her you had a fight, well, mama, they talking about you. Well, did you win, baby? Did you, did you, what you do? I mean, did you, what did mama teach you? But the first stage is when we tend to idolize our parents. My dad better than your dad. My mama cook better than your mama cook. We tend to idolize our parents. And then there's those adolescent years when sometimes we start to watch this, demonize the parents that we previously idolized. That's when we start to notice things that we don't agree with. That's when we start to say that they're out of touch. Or they're too strict. They, they just don't understand, Will Smith. They just don't understand. And, Come on. Come on. and we start to see the things, the flaws that sometimes we impose on them because they think differently and they just don't get it. Oh, I can't stand I just be, That's when I'll be glad when I turn 18. What you gonna do when you turn 18? I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving here. Where you gonna go? I'm gonna get my own place. Where can you afford to live? If you can do all that, baby, you don't have to wait till you turn 18. If you can make, if you can make that, if you can make that kind of money to support yourself, you know what? You can do all that. I won't say nothing to you. <laughs> Turn 18, your stupid self. <laughs> Can't wait that turn 18. I'm out. And then from the demonizing years, we, we, we then turn to um, an interesting stage towards not only do we demonize them, but we sometimes as we demonize them, we learn how to also utilize them. Okay? See, the, 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 the basic utilize is, Dad, I need your help with this, or Mom, I need your help with this. That's utilization, right? But when we inculcate demonization with utilization, now is, I can't, uh, see, this is what I'm talking about. I just don't, I, this is what I'm talking about. I can't stand this. I'll be glad when, Dad, give me $20. That's good preaching. We demonize in one sense, and ask them to drop us off, drop them off at the mall in the next sentence. Okay, I'm I'm just just revelation. And then comes the stage when we enter when your child enters adulthood, when they start to realize some things, right? Now you've went from idolize idolization, demonization, utilization to humanization. Now your parents have become human. And when they're human, see, because now you can identify, now you really discovered the things that were right that was wrong, and you said, well, they're not perfect. 
You know what? When you did that, you really, oh, wow. And when they become human, be careful, children, because when they become human, the devil may tempt you into making them appear. The devil may try to tempt you into making them to appear when they just become human. They've always been human. They, 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 they've, they, they've, they've never been perfect. It's just when you were down there, you couldn't see up here. But now that you got some bills, now that you got a job, now that you saw some things, and now either one or two things, when they become human, you will come to respect them more or dishonor them more. Now you say, you know what, Mama, I, I'm Daddy, you know, I, I remember when you said X, Y, Z. I remember, I remember, because now as a human, you're trying to, you, now you can identify with them on certain levels that as a child you could identify with them on. And so, and so here you have the, 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 these stages of children. And finally we reach a stage of our biggest obstacle when it comes to honoring this is when your child is now chasing a career. They start a, they're starting a family. They're running after their own kids. And we miss the fact that mom and daddy are getting old. <laughs> Life has happened. You know, we've graduated and we done fell in love with somebody. We starting all this good stuff. And, and life just goes on, gets faster and faster and faster. And now the days get longer and longer and more multiple but, uh, between the times we even talk to them. And they're still getting old. And in all the business of those years, it's easy to neglect our relationship with our parents because we've got so much going on. It's easy to neglect the ones who didn't catch a break with us. Our parents are growing older, and as they grow older, they find themselves appreciated less and less by this world and sometimes by their children. You see, it's slow. The older they get, Society says, so, so, okay, so you can't work anymore, so now we got to take care of you. So we become less and less appreciated by society and sometimes even less and less appreciated by their own children. Child, think how you would feel if you couldn't move around like you used to and, you, and who you love the most wouldn't even come see you. Dad is no longer a superhero. Mom is no longer our most intimate place of vulnerability. Furthermore, we live in a society that worships beauty and, 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 and we're always trying to find out how to look younger. And as we grow older, we lose things. Years ago, parents and grandparents were valued, considered a storehouse for wisdom and their experience. That's not the case anymore. We don't value wisdom we tend to push those things aside and say, that's old school thinking. That's old school. That's, that's how it used to be. As if this is new. As if what you're going through is new. It's not new. Ooh, I wish I had time to check. Um, okay. Ooh, some little kids near though. Ah. Uh, listen. Your mom and dad had the same itch that you have. They're not telling you don't scratch the itch as if they never itched before themselves. But if they scratch the itch too early and they've seen that by scratching the itch too much, it can lead to things that can be a detriment to them. They're trying to say, don't scratch it. Don't, don't, don't wait before you scratch that. There, there's a time to scratch. And if you do it right, boy, you're going to love to scratch. It's a better, listen, there's a better scratching 
when you ain't been scratched by 30 people. It's better to teach one how to scratch you just right. Uh-huh. You should have hit it hard just then. But we think that stuff is just new. No, oh, I'm messing people up. <laughs> Living long, when it says and live and your days may be longer, Mia, Maya, when it says days be long, it's not just, it's not necessarily talking about a quantity of days and years. It's, it's talking about the quality of days and years. You see, I can, a person can live 80 years and never experience prosperity and joy. Another can live, can live for 30 years. And if God has breathed on that time, it's a more quality of life. And sometimes, I'm telling you, I'm, t- I'm telling you, it could be. Oh, that if there's something inside of you now that don't seem quite complete, that even when you should be at your happiest, there's something missing, ask yourself the question, is all well between me and my mom and daddy. It's all, I mean, because I should be happy. I should be, it's all well between me and my mama and my daddy. This morning, I, let me wrap this up by, um, oh goodness to say. Uh, let me give you four words. Let me give you four words or things to say this is for my kids. And listen, when I say kids, I mean you got parents. Right. I'm gonna give you four things that you can say that you can be sure that you're representing a child that's honoring a parent. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. If you are, I mean, serious, are y'all ready for it? I've got four more things I'm about to go home. You, you with me? You ready? Because some of y'all are looking real tight mouth at me right now. <laughs> The first thing you can say to honor a parent is, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, ma'am. I mean, something as simple as honoring them in that, in your reply to them. You shouldn't, I don't care if it's cool with your parent or not, don't call them by their first name. I don't care, I don't, I don't care, I don't care. I say this like twice a year. How is it cool if you call them by their first name, but you can't call your teacher by theirs? You don't call your boss by his or her first name. If they went to school and called a teacher by their first name, you you got a problem. They don't call their pastor by his first name. But the one that lived there, hey, Reggie. And sometimes you got to teach other people's kids. Don't let other people's kids call you by your first name. You say, listen, listen, uh, listen, uh, I don't know what your mom and daddy told you, but I'm grown. I'm Mr. Ronnie. That's who I am, Mr. Ronnie. I'm Uncle Ronnie. I ain't Ronnie. Sometimes you got to teach what parents... Now, people don't like that. Well, you can't, well, well you, 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 can't, you can't make them respect. But yes, you can. Who told you that? That you can't make them respect grown folk. The police make them respect the law. Second. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Seems like a small thing. But oftentimes kids forget that. That needs to be drilled into them. I'm sorry, every time you, you make sure every time you do anything for a child, they say, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. If you want, if, and, and, and if you're behind and you have not taught this, you may have to get real aggressive before, before, before they get off into the world. When they wake up in the morning, before they say, good morning, thank you, mama. Thank you, dad. What are, yes. <laughs> because you woke up this morning. You slept in my bed last night. Say thank you. 
Who bad you slept in? Yo, we'll, so we'll say thank you if you appreciate it. <laughs> Three. This is going to be kind of tough. Be able to tell a parent, I'm sorry. Let me take my time here. Children have this false sense of pride and bravado. I, it, it's, it's, I, I've seen it more now than I've ever seen, Nicole. I've seen it more now than I've ever seen it before. That young men, young women, they won't say I'm sorry. It's like it's something I don't understand. It's like something, and they wrong. And they won't say I'm sorry. Oh! Those two words can get you a lot of respect in this world. To when you're wrong, man, to acknowledge when you and by the way, it's not an apology to say, I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. I want to take something and just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that you felt like I that's not an apology. If nothing else, be sorry for how things are between. I'm so sorry we're at this place. I'm sorry we're at this place. How do we fix this place? Because I, I was thinking I was doing this, but obviously it was interpreted wrong. So how, how you see, that's two different, those two different mindsets, right? I just blessed some couples just then. <laughs> and four, I love you, mom. Love you, Dad. Oh, those three words are powerful. When coming from a source that we love the most. I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. And it's not preceded by nothing that they're asking for. Just off GP. Love you, Mom. Love you, Dad. And this commandment is, so this commandment is, is important. It's, it's just as important as the first three. <clears throat> that God will describe himself. He says, he says, I need you to honor your parents. Have no gods before me to keep this right. Honor your parents. Because out of this relationship comes all others. This is a jewel. Mm. This is Rodolph, this is a jewel of a commandment. Why? Because out of all 10, Tiffany and Billy shared, out of all 10 commandments, this is the only one that has a blessing attached to it. This is the only one there's a direct blessing attached to it. How you honor your parents. I remember when my dad died. And I think about, um, praise God, God, my, before, before my father passed, he had an opportunity to see kind of me go through various stages. And, and um, I was able to kind of bless my dad with some things. Um, Oh man, so many stories. My dad and I, when my dad didn't raise me, we weren't in the same house, but I always had connection with him. He wasn't there physically, but I always had connection with my dad. And older I got, you know, I, you know, you know how kids do, you kind of stray and go some other places. But I remember when, when, when I got some big time trouble, the only person that came to get me was my daddy. He sure did. I'd never, I'd never forget, I would never forget how I felt when he came to get me when I was in some trouble. He asked me one time what happened and never asked me again. I remember, so, and I remember, so it, it was an honor for me to do certain blessings and do certain things for my father. And, but, but, but here, but Cornelia, um, if I may be transparent, may I humanize myself in front of all that are watching? I can think of a lot of great times me and my dad had. But you know what always comes up? What always comes to my mind when I think about my father was the last thing, one of the last thing he asked me for, I told him no. He wanted 
he wanted, he wanted me to buy him a riding lawnmower. My dad was country too. He wanted a riding lawnmower. He saw a riding lawnmower he wanted. He had maxed out his car, this little, he's had a little Montgomery Ward car, Sears car, the other way. And he wanted me to buy him a riding lawnmower. I had the money. And you know what I told my dad? No, dad, I, 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 ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got to do that right now. He said, he said okay. Never bought again. <laughs> I had it to buy. And said, no, nah, I'm good. I, I'm. Why didn't I buy a lawnmower for my dad that I could very much well afford? Because in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I don't want my dad to think he's calling me, ask me anything anytime he wants to. I don't, I don't want, as if I'm raising him. <laughs> you got to catch up with this. In my mind, like, no, nah, I ain't, nah, ain't, ain't doing it. Because the only reason he had, I don't know, I don't know. I had issues. I had issues. I told him no about something I could have easily did. And since he's died, since he's gone through heaven, it's the one thing I regret the most. I didn't buy him a lawnmower. Oh, God. And I wish I could get that moment back because he said, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back a little bit on every month. I'll give you something back. Oh, I wish I could go back and say, Dad, you got it. I'll get, no, no, don't, don't worry about paying me nothing back. You paid me enough. I'm here. And because, now, because I later discovered after he died, I got to hurry. After my dad died, I discovered he left me everything he had. He had a little land, came to me. House came to me. He never told me these things. Even when I told him I wouldn't buy him a lawnmower, him knowing that I had it, he never said, you do realize I'm going to leave you. He never, he said, okay. <laughs> Kids, you have no idea of the plans that your parents have for you that they never even told you. The things that they do, they don't, we don't keep a list of everything that we do. We, we don't. Now, let me be clear. Let me be, let me be clear. Some of us here, we got some parents that were dishonorable. We got some parents that didn't talk to us right. Amen. Let me say this for free. If you raise a daughter, watch your mouth. Be careful how you talk to a little girl. Especially if you daddy. If she knows that you are dad, you've always taken care of her and love her the most, protect her from all, all harm, hurts, and danger that came from dad, but dad just called me a whore, or dad just cussed me, then guess what she's now convinced of? You can love me and talk me any kind of way, and that's okay. Why? Because my daddy did that. And for you mothers raising little boys, I can't tell you how I wish we could send some of these mama boys back home so you could try it again. Mama, you don't mean no, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta finish this, y'all. Let me say this real quick. Real quick, real quick. Mothers, be careful not to break his spirit as a future man. He's gonna be a man one day. And as a man that he will become one day, what he does not need to wrestle with is a mother that broke his spirit because she was frustrated. He ain't do that to you. I don't care how much he looks like his dad. That ain't his... And for you to have unmitigated gall to, to prophesy over his life and say, you're going to be just like you. You ain't blank and he wasn't either. I got to hurry, y'all.
But there are some parents, here's where I was. I understand some of us were raised by parents that did some stuff to us or in front of us that they should have never did. Been messing with us ever since. So, so, so preacher, if they were dishonorable, why you say honor the dishonorable? <laughs> why, why, why are you? Because in the same verse I've, I've referenced in Colossians 3.20, when it says honor your parents, it also says fathers don't provoke your children. So parents, in a real sense, make it easy to be honored. Your child should have never seen you drunk. You can make it hard. Other adults don't respect you drunk. How can a child respect you drunk? I'm in the Bible, Genesis 9. Noah had sons. After the flood, Noah got drunk. His son saw him drunk. One son mocked him, the others covered him. And the son that mocked him was punished. God did not look favorably above, over, over son Ham who dishonored his father's nakedness. Noah got drunk and was naked. And one son came in and mocked him. The other sons covered him up. The two that covered him were blessed. The one that didn't was looked upon down by God. Same parent, two different responses. So I don't care what they did. You have no right under God to disrespect or dishonor your parents. Either one. The one in the house and one out there. Either one. It's not all about rules, parents. Rules without relationship always breeds rebellion. You're not a CO in prison. Give them, give them explanation as to why certain things you're saying that, that's important for them to do or not to do. It's okay. It don't make you less of a parent to explain. I'm, because I say this, that's why. Now, every now and then, that should do. In the name of Jesus. Every now and then, that should be that, 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 just right. Jesus. Where we going? How long are we going to? Where we going? Where we going? Shut up. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm preaching out of my experience right now. <laughs> Honoring our parents doesn't add weight to them, Quentin. Honoring our parent adds no weight to our parents. Watch this now. No more than honoring God adds weight to God. They have weight. You're not adding anything. Child, you are acknowledging what God has already put on them. You are to honor what's heavy. Preacher, I'm convicted. Pastor, I'm convicted. I have not honored my parents. I, I, I've, I've, not, I've not done it. Especially my dad or especially my mom. I have not honored him. I have not honored her. But the only problem is I can't fix it because they're gone. They're dead and gone. How can I go back and fix? Because I feel like I'm in this holding pattern of, of, of in this space because I've not, I did not make it right and I do not honor my parents. How do I fix it? Or am I just stuck that I've never honored them? Good question. Glad you thought it. If a parent has gone on to be with the Lord, how you can still honor them today, you ready? Speak well of them. Speak well of them. See, one of the number one ways, um, are y'all are y'all paying attention? Yeah. Brayden and Noah? <laughs> Noah? Are you paying attention? Brayden? Okay, I thought I saw a side conversation going. <laughs> it's to speak well of them. See, see, one of the things of what you do to dis to dishonor your parents is you lead in with the bad thing. Who's your dad? Oh, my dad named Reggie. Oh, my dad, my dad got 13 kids, child. <laughs> Who asked you that? 
Where's your mom? Yeah, my, yeah, yeah my mama, she, she's still in Georgia. She, yeah, she's doing crack real bad. Who asked you that? Huh? Who asked you about the negative? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> One way to honor them is just to speak well of them. You don't have to give all the negative of what y'all went through. Oh, yeah, me, yeah, me and my mom, we used to fuck, fuss and fight all the time. She watched me. I, you don't have to lead in with that. Honor them just by speaking well of them, even though they're gone. Now, y'all, I got to roll. But I'm not saying that they not have flaws. What I'm saying is you must honor them. See, if, 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 you, if you're honoring a flawed parent, you're, if you're not honoring a flawed parent, you're dishonoring a perfect God. You can tweet that somewhere. If you're not honoring a flawed parent, you're dishonoring a perfect God. Um, okay, one more. 1 Timothy 5, 8. Put the, turn that for me. 1 Timothy 5, 8. Because with this being said, I want to make sure that when you on your way home, you're not convinced that you got to move your in-law in with you. <laughs> so I got to let my mama stay with us. <laughs> Pray for me. Ah. First Timothy 5, 8, we up there. But if anyone does not provide for his, for his relatives, and especially for members of his, own, of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. <clears throat> it's the water. What it's saying is that we ought to be, and, I'm, and I don't have a time to deal with this whole thing of how if we did our job as Christians, then the government would not have to take care of our elders. If we did what we're supposed to do, the government would not have to take care of our elders if we did what we're supposed to do as the church. I, I don't have time this morning. But this, what this also is saying is that, yes, you will honor your parents. Yes, you will take care of them if need be, but not before you take care of your own house. Which means that we honor mother, we honor dad, but they don't come before wife and husband. So, so, so parents that are, that are listening to this and, and I, I saw the brother like, whoa, thank you, Jesus, you said. <clears throat> but, but the reason I'm saying this is because you know, I don't want anyone here to say, you know, pick up the phone, listen, pass and say, I, and I, I, I come move in with y'all because you, you did on the Lord by, no, nope, slow down. <laughs> because you got to, if you are the type that upon moving in their house, you disrupt their family. They can't bring you in there because now they're disobeying another command or bringing it to their own household, neglecting their own household, and you know you got funny ways. <laughs> See, they can't, they can't honor you in that capacity because you messy. <laughs> you don't respect who they married. You tell the kids stuff that they don't teach them. That was free. That was free. So, I got to go. Um, let me leave you with this. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Let me give you the, the ultimate reason. We got to go home. Woo! Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Luke 2, 5, 1. Cause anybody, who knows that in Spanish? How do you say 2, 5, 1 in Spanish? Dos, dos cinco, uno. All we did is said each word, each, uh, I thought, dos cinco uno. I thought it was a way you say it, just cinque de water. Cinquente, cinquente uno. She said, si, say C. Si. Cinquento uno. Dos cinquente uno. Dos. Whatever. Uh, you know what I meant. I want to read this um, Luke 2, 5, 1. If I can find it. Yes. And he went down with them, them being his parents, and, and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. 
and his mother treasured, measured all these things in her heart. The Bible says that Jesus, God incarnate, God, the creator of the cosmos, God, honored and was submissive to his parents. If Jesus being God humbled himself and had good favor with his parents, who are you? The Bible says it's not the servant less than the master. John 13, if you want to be like Jesus, honor your parents. And by the way, don't be stupid either. Your parent is who's responsible for taking care of you, not just the ones who are responsible for procreating you. If you have a step-parent, that's a parent. Joseph, Joseph had nothing to do with, G, with Jesus being born, yet Jesus humbled himself. Matter of fact, Jesus humbled himself so much be, be under his stepfather that he took up the same trade that his stepdaddy did. Jesus was a carpenter because Joseph was. This is the word of God for the people of God. Hear it and be saved.